So the first thing we need to do is we need to get some definitions out of the way. We have to talk about quantized versus continuous. Now we talk about a quantized value, only specific values are accepted. Whereas a continuous value, all values are accepted. Now I like these drawings at the bottom of our page to help illustrate this idea. So if you look at example B, example B would give you an example of a quantized value. You could have your block right here, or you could put it up a stair, or you could put it down a stair, or you could put it up so many stairs. The point is you're on a stair or you're not. You can't be on 1.2 stairs or 1.7 stairs. You're on a one stair or you're on the next. Whereas a continuous value would be more like a ramp. You could have this block at any position up or down the ramp. All the values would be accepted. So if we measure something like temperature, for example, there's an infinite amount of ways that it could go up or down with increments. So this would be an example of something that's continuous. If we think about charge, though, you're either positive 1 or positive 2. There's not such a thing as where you have like a decimal of a charge. So this is an example of a quantized value. And same thing with mass. I could increase your mass by an atom, not by half an atom or 1.3 atoms. So this is another example of a quantized value. So now this is going to bring us to our definition. We're going to be describing a black body. Now, a black body is a hypothetical object that reflects no light but absorbs all light. So an example might be, for example, let's say you're on a piece of black asphalt in the summer. So here you are and you're standing here on the pavement. Now you're going to have sunlight come down and it's going to hit the pavement. Now it's going to do a couple things. First thing it's going to do is some of it might reflect off into your eyes. We would see this but some of it is going to be absorbed into the pavement and we can feel that on our feet. Now, black body radiation is how the object radiates energy and all things with temperature radiate energy. We could talk about an example where we radiate energy. We radiate energy in the infrared regions. Stars emit radiation in the visible or the UV range. When we talk about a black body specifically, we're talking, describing something that is a hypothetical, that doesn't actually exist. It is something that would absorb all light and reflect none. So therefore, when it releases energy, it is due to just absorption. So if we look down here, this is an example of some black body radiation curves. And what you're going to notice is that it's the same drop drop off for all of these. You can see it's just sort of stretched out in the x axis. In every case, what's happening is that the curve goes up and then trails off. So the difference between the 6000 curve and the 375 curve is that we've simply taken and stretched them out. So for example, humans are well, we're not going to be 375 degrees. Our temperature is around about 300 Kelvin, 310 Kelvin. So we're going to have a curve that's like this. So when we look at our max, what well, that's going to be in the infrared region. If we look at something like taking metal and warming it up when we're trying to work with it, that would be around 2,000, 3,000 degrees. And we can see that's why it glows red. If we look at a star, for example, that's really hot, so this is hotter than our sun, what you would see is this is an example of like a blue star. So then it was realized that the energy that's being released, when we look at, let's say, a hot metal, for example, the energy is being released in packets, known as quanta. So the energy that's being released is proportional to the wavelength. So the formula that they came up with is E is equal to HF, with F here representing frequency in hertz, and E here representing energy in joules. Now, in order to make the left side equal to the right side, we need a constant in here, and we call this Planck's constant. And it is a really small number. It is 6.63 times 10 to the negative 34 joules seconds. Now, if we were to keep working with this, we would get joule values that are really small. 10 to the negative 18, 10 to the negative 19, 10 to the negative 20, and it 
becomes really hard to work with numbers like that. So what we use in this unit is we're going to use something called electron volts. So we will usually convert our energy values to electron volts to make it more practical to work with. And one electron volt is going to be equal to 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19 joules.